Craig Hartman with VFDs.com. Today we're going to talk about harmonics and power system quality. Take a look at our first diagram here. This is a sine wave. This is what you want to see in your plant. It is a clean, nice sine wave. It's what your loads like to see, what your loads like to run on. Now let's look at diagram two. This is not so clean. It can be referred to as corrupt power, dirty power, polluted power. You'll notice that we have current on the bottom and frequency on the top, and the current is created in short pulses. This is how variable frequency drives work. They gulp power in pulses, and whenever there's a pulse, it drops the voltage. You can see that the voltage is dropped every time there's a pulse, and this creates flat topping. So this is some seriously polluted power. Variable frequency drives are the number one cause of power system pollution. And in fact, power system pollution is the same in electrical systems as it is in any other sort of pollution. Now, Fourier invented a theory called harmonics. Actually, Fourier analysis can tell us that any wave shape, no matter what it is, can be built with sine waves. So his theory tells us that we can model any wave shape with sine waves. In this case, the first sine wave is 60 hertz, and then the second high... Uh, sine wave is 120 hertz, which is 2 times 60 hertz. The third is 3 times 60 hertz. And by using this theory, we can take that wave shape apart and see what kind of sine waves are inside. The 60 hertz is the good one. All the rest of them are high frequency noise. So we can look at this as if that drive were sending high frequency noise back into our power system. Take a look at this diagram of a variable frequency drive. If you want to know more about how a variable frequency drive works, check out our video on what is a variable frequency drive. Notice at the bottom, this is THID, that stands for Total Harmonic Current Distortion, and it's around 100%. That is horrible. That means for every amp going to the motor, we have another amp of high frequency noise that's being injected into our power distribution system. I've heard this described as the Tasmanian devil. It's that evil thing that goes throughout and just causes havoc and damage everywhere it goes. And it's the same thing with a variable frequency drive. It sends out these high frequency noise signals and they go throughout your facility and even back to your customer's facility or your uh, neighbor's facility and causing problems within their facility. It can even create legal liabilities when these harmonics cause problems. Now the first, cheapest, best way of reducing these harmonics is with a three-phase line reactor. I'm holding a three-phase line reactor in my hand here. We call this a reactor even though it's actually composed of three reactors, one for phase A, one for phase B, one for phase C. It's a very simple item to install. You bring your three phases into there and then you bring three more lines out and go to your variable frequency drive. This device will eliminate two-thirds of the harmful harmonics that exist in your power distribution system. So this reduces our harmonics from 100% down to maybe 30 plus percent. Let's take a look at the actual waveforms that we get. This is a waveform without reactors and you can see for a three phase input drive we get two large pulses of current on the positive side and then two on the negative side with each cycle. If we add line reactors to this, you'll notice that it makes a considerable improvement. Now this is not a sine wave, it still has some power system pollution, but not nearly as bad as the previous slide. This eliminates two-thirds of our harmonics. There are many other methods of harmonic mitigation, and I've shown some of them here. I've divided them up into levels. These are simply my levels, they don't correspond to any sort of a standard but you can see that there's a number of different harmonic technologies. Time does not allow us to go into any detail on these harmonic technologies, and I would argue that for the most part, you don't really need to understand them, you simply need to know how they perform. So without any reactors, we have 100% harmonics. With reactors, 30%, and then these others can get us down to 5% or even lower than 5%. So this represents the amount of high frequency noise generated into your power distribution system. So the question is, how good do we need to be? 
Well, take a look at this diagram from IEEE 519. If we have a very strong system, that would be an I short circuit to I load of greater than 1,000, they will let us have 20% harmonics. If we have a very weak system, that would be a system in which we have less than 20 short circuit to load ratio, and we have to maintain 5% harmonics. In reality, 95% of the systems will be in the 12 or 15% category. So you'll notice I've highlighted the number 12. In 98% of the instances, if you keep 12% distortion, then you will comply with IEEE 519. Now let's go back to these levels. How can you comply with 12% distortion? Well, level one, the reactors actually will comply with 12% distortion in most instances. That's because your entire load is not variable frequency drives. So if only a third of your load is variable frequency drives and the rest of your load is rather clean, a 30% distortion on drives will end up as about a 10% distortion coming into your facility and you will comply with IEEE 519. On the other hand, if more loads are there, then you may need more harmonic filtration. My rule of thumb, if you have 25% or less of your load as variable frequency drives, use reactors and you should be fine. If more than 25% of your load is variable frequency drives or other high harmonic loads, then you're going to need to do something else. And this shows some of those filters. Now you don't really need to understand how those filters work. You simply need to understand that they work. So let's take a look at an actual installation. This is in our shop, a five horsepower motor. And you can see that the current on the bottom is taking power in short pulses and it's causing extensive flat topping. Putting a filter on this has a dramatic effect and you can see that the current is not exactly a sine wave but very close and you can see that the voltage has been corrected to a virtually perfect sine wave. If we look at this on a harmonics meter, you can see that the first harmonic is 100%, that's the good one. All the rest of them are bad ones, and we have significant harmonic pollution. By putting a filter on, the first harmonic is still 100%, as it always is, but you can see that we've dramatically reduced the harmonic pollution on the remainder of these high-frequency noise signals. So our solution, number one, specify performance technology. If you need 12% harmonic distortion, specify that. Next, specify that it be tested. In the case of variable frequency drives, we recommend that you actually specify that it be tested at the variable frequency drive input terminals. Next, if you have variable frequency drives with only reactors, don't load a transformer or a gener generator to more than 50%. If the variable frequency drives have other filters, go ahead and load that up 100%. All right, that's a brief overview of power system pollution and harmonics. We haven't had time to go into any specific detail, but if you'd like more detail, please feel free to call one of our knowledgeable specialists at bfds.com. Check out our extensive inventory of drives and also of drive accessories, such as the three-phase line reactors that we have mentioned today.